Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. Today's video is based on a question I got in the comments and this person wanted to know how to light a house on fire by pressing a button. What I'm going to do is have my player touch this green button right here and we'll see what happens. Okay, and you see as soon as I touch the green button, the house lights on fire. Let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so the setup for this video is pretty easy. We just need two different things. We need our button and also our house. For the button, I just used a cylinder part and then resized it and rotated it. For the house, I just selected one from the toolbox. For this video, I used the basic family home, but you can use whatever house you want to. One thing to keep in mind when you're selecting your house is the script that we're about to write looks through the model and checks for parts, and then whatever parts it finds, it adds a fire to them. So if you want to check your house to make sure it would work for this, go ahead and just open up the house model and make sure there's some parts that are outside of other models like this here. If you select a different house, the fire may look different on it just depending on where the parts are located. So just keep that in mind when selecting the houses. You may have to try a couple different ones until you find one that you like. Okay, after you select your house and also make your button, we can start writing the script for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a script on this button right here. So we're just going to click on it. Find it in the Explore menu and click on the plus sign. We're going to be adding a script. You can go and delete the print hello world message. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable as a reference for this part. So we're going to say local button is going to be equal to script dot parent. After that, we're going to create a reference for the house model. So we'll say local house is equal to game dot workspace dot basic family home which is the name of the house next we're going to create a function we're going to say local function and for this one we can call it whatever we want to I'm just going to name it burn and this is going to take in a parameter other part which will be the part that touches the button inside the function here the first thing we're going to say is local part parent is going to be equal to other part dot parent. So what this is doing, whatever part touches this button, so if a player touches this button, likely it's going to be either a leg or a foot or something like that. And what we're doing is we're getting the parent of that object. So if it's the player's foot, then the parent of that foot would be the player itself. And that's what we're storing in this variable right here. Next, we're going to see if whatever object is touching the button is actually a player. We're going to do that with a couple lines of code. First, we're going to say local humanoid is going to be equal to part parent colon. Next, we're going to say find first child, which is a, I forgot the T for parent. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put humanoid. So what this is doing, it's checking the part parent to see if there's a humanoid part to it. If it does find a humanoid part, then what we're going to say is if humanoid, then. So once we figure out that a player is touching this button, what we want to do is go through our house model and check for parts. And we're going to do that by saying for. And then we're going to name two different variables. The first one is num, which we're not going to use. The second one is child, which we will be using. We're going to say in pairs. And then the model that we're looking for is house, which is what we defined up here. From the house, we're going to say get children. And then inside this for loop, we're going to first check to see if the child is a part. So we're going to say if child. And then colon is a. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put part. Then what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if there's already a fire on that part. So we'll say local already burning this is going to be equal to child and then from that child we're going to say find first child which is a so on this part what we're looking for is a fire so inside the parentheses we're going to put fire after that we're going to say if not already burning so if it doesn't find a fire on that part 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a fire to that part. So we'll say local fire is equal to instance dot new. And then we're adding a new fire. We're going to define a couple things for this fire. We're going to first define its parent property. We're going to do that by saying fire dot parent. And this is going to be equal to child. So we're putting this new fire that we just created inside of child, which is a part inside of the house model. After that, we're going to define its size. So we're going to say fire dot size. The fire dot size can be a number between 2 and 30. For now, I'm going to select 20. But if you want a bigger fire, you can do something closer to 30. If you want a smaller fire on each part, then you can choose something closer to 2. That's all we need for the function. So we're going to finish this up at the end by saying button dot touched colon connect. Inside the parentheses will be the name of our function, which is burn. Okay, let's go ahead and run our code and make sure we didn't make any mistakes. All right, so now that we're in the game, let's go ahead and test our button and see if it lights the house on fire. And there we go. So just to kind of show you what the script is doing, I'm going to open up the house model over here. And then if we look under some of the parts, we see that it adds a fire, and that's what creates the effect of the house looking like it's on fire. Okay, so I think this is going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.